Hello and welcome to a new episode for Adobe Creative Cloud TV. My name is Terry White and in this episode we're going to take a look at three new filters that arrived in the uh, 2014 October update for Photoshop CC. So Photoshop CC 2014 October update, three new filters. Let's take a look at what they do in this design tutorial. I figured I would just kind of wrap them all in instead of just showing you feature, 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 show you how they could actually be used together. So here we go. I've got a creepy stock photo forest scene. This is kind of great for the October uh, time frame or theme. I think you're going to see where this is going in just a moment. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and open up my second image that I want. And let's go ahead and do that. And of course, now you can really tell where this is going. Yes, it's going to be a Halloween theme. And even if you don't care for Halloween, I think you'll find uh, the tutorial useful either way. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, we need the pumpkin all by itself onto its, a new layer. So I'm just going to go ahead and make a selection uh, using the quick select tool. And of course, that I could spend time going all the way around it trying to get the selection just right. But let's let Photoshop do the work whenever we can. And we'll just go up to select. We will use an old command called grow. And grow will grow the selection and pretty much get give me exactly what I want. But in this case, it selected the white background. And instead, what I really want to do is select inverse to tell it to select everything else but the white background. Now I'm going to go ahead and grab my move tool. And, the, and I'm working with the tabbed framed interface. And of course, I can't see the creepy tree background anymore. But if you just pick it up with your move tool, drag up to the tab, wait for it to switch over to the other image, and don't let go yet drag down into the other image, then let go, and that will copy your selected image over to the other one. Now, of course, it came in at a size that's way too big. Uh, so I'm going to hit Command T for free transform or Control T on Windows. And I can't even see my handles. It's so big to scale this down. So instead of me moving the image just to get to the other handle, what I'm going to do instead is just hit Command or Zero on the Mac, Control Zero on Windows. And what that will do is, is no matter how big your image is, no matter how far out those handles are, it will scale everything down so you can see all the handles. So now that I've done that, I'm just going to go ahead and scale this up a little bit, scale this down a little bit. And we're going to make, we're still going to have a nice big pumpkin, but we're not going to have it as big as it was. And maybe even tilt it a little bit like that. Okay, so now that we've got it in place, tilted, scaled, I'm going to push it down just a little bit there. And we'll go ahead and uh, we can hit Command-0 again to zoom back up. And now we've got it just in place where we want it. All right, so we hit Return or Enter to um, zoom it. We can still pick it up and move it. Uh, it is still all there, but that's about where I want it, maybe a little bit over there. Okay, and maybe down a little bit. All right, now, the next thing in compositing is we typically want things to try and look as real as possible. And the problem is the pumpkin was on a nice bright white background, and now it's against a dark ground, and we still see the white reflection or, or cast inside the pumpkin. So we can do a couple of things to kind of tone this down a bit. First thing I would do coming from a white background is I would go layer, uh, we would go to matting, and we would remove the white mat. In other words, any white pixels around the edge would now be removed. Next thing we'll do is we'll just kind of darken this up. We can do this several different ways. I could mask it, I could use tools. I'm just going to do it quickly uh, using the burn tool. We'll just go ahead and burn in those edges um, below so that it's not so bright. And again, you can use any method you want. You can clone some of the background onto the pumpkin. You can uh, use a color brush. You can use whatever method you like best. I'm just doing this down and dirty because this is not really not the basis of the tutorial. We haven't got to the filters yet. All right, so anyway, we can kind of tone this down. And once we get it nice and dark the way we want, we can go in now and take a look at our first uh, feature. First thing we're gonna do is name our layers. Use good document hygiene. And we're going to go ahead and create a new layer. And we're going to name that new layer New Tree. Be oh, tree, not Treak. All right, so now that we have our new tree, we're going to go ahead and pull that down behind the pumpkin. So the blank layer is between the pumpkin and the old tree. And what we're going to do on the new tree layer is we're going to try our first new filter. 
Now, this is a new filter in Photoshop, but it was actually a function in the previous version. It was buried in pat scripted patterns, where, again, no one would know it's there unless you were looking for it or you knew where to find it. But now it's actually under render, and it's actually there called tree. So when I go to tree, um, what I would normally get here, let's do the default preset. Uh, this is what you would normally get. It would start off on the first tree. You have several trees to choose from. I do want the oak tree, but I don't want it the, the default look. This is nice, too nice and clean and green for our creepy background. So what we're going to do is we're going to kill the tree. No trees will be harmed in this episode. But we're going to go ahead and just simply reduce the amount of leaves down to zero. Make a nice dead tree. The next thing we can do is we can adjust the thickness of the branches we can make it nice and thin make it really old and creepy make it a little thicker a little stronger and of course you can adjust the height you can play around with that and get all kinds of different looks and feels for the height i'm going to bring that down quite a bit there and then i'm just going to go ahead and just say okay that will render out a tree exactly the way we told it to do it on that blank new tree layer now since we put it on its own layer we can use the move tool we can pick it up we can put it wherever we want, behind the pumpkin, and I'm going to go ahead and put it to the left of the pumpkin, and I'm going to stretch it to the right. So I'm just going to hit Command T, and I don't care about stretching it because no one will know that it's being distorted because no one knew what the original shape was anyway. And so now it looks like our tree has hair. All right, and again, if you want to tone down the branches down here on the bottom, you can darken those, do whatever it is you want to do with those to make it look even more realistic. All right, so now we have a, a pumpkin with hair. And the next thing we're going to do is we're going to go in and take a look at our next new filter. All right, so I'm going to do another new layer. And this layer is going to be called Flames. And I'm going to go ahead and just pull the Flame layer up above the um, uh, Pumpkin layer. Now what I need to do on that blank Flames layer is I need some paths. So I'm going to go ahead and grab the Pen tool. And I know some of you are afraid of the pen tool. The pen tool is really not that hard, uh, especially what, for what we're going to do now. It's going to be really easy. I just need something in the eyes, the nose, and the mouth. So here's what we're going to do. We're just going to click. One click there. One click there. That was it. We're done with that eye. Now we click on the pen tool again to deselect that path. For the nose, we're just going to go drag up a little bit and then down a little bit to create a path along the nose. Click on the pin again because we're done with the nose. Next, click here and click here for that eye. Click back on the pin because we're done with the other eye now. Last but not least, we're going to come down here to the mouth and we're going to go in and click and click and click and click and click. We're kind of going in the jagged shape of the teeth. Click, 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 click. Click. Done. Click the pen tool again. So now you've got your four paths. You've got one in each eye. You've got one in the nose and one in the mouth. Because we created those paths, we can now use them for our next filter. Go to the filter menu. Render Flame. This is a brand new filter. This did not exist as a, as a scripted pattern before. And with the Flame filter, it will come up with the same kind of dialog box, same kinds of controls. That's a little too much flame for a pumpkin. Let's go ahead and tone it down quite a bit. And let's bring the length down. Still a little too much. Bring it down some more. That's looking about right. Uh, flame line complexity. And again, you can play around with this to kind of get the look you want. That looks more like a log or, or campfire. That looks like more of what would be inside of a pumpkin. Maybe something in between those two. And again, we can make it, oh, that looks about right. Let's click OK. I was going to say we can make it less turbulent, more turbulent, play with the jag, play with the opacity, but, and matter of fact, opacity down just a little bit more. But that looks really, really good. Matter of fact, no, I liked it on 25. There we go. All right, perfect. Click OK. And it will render our flames. Now, that flame is there on its own layer, but what's going to get in your way right now is that work path is still there. 
So I'm going to go to my paths panel and I'm done with that path because I don't need it anymore to make flames. I don't need any more to adjust those flames. Those flames are there. So I'm just going to go ahead and delete that work path. Now, when I go back to the layers panel, the flames, if I want to move them, I switch to the move tool. I can move them. Oops. <laughs> switch to the move tool and switch to the flames layer. And now I can move the flames around. I can do whatever I want with the flames without the paths getting in the way. So for example, maybe I want to move it down a little bit add a mask to it um, and we'll grab our paintbrush we'll switch to black paint and we'll just go in and our brush Ooh, we need a different brush not a signature brush from the last tutorial let's just go ahead and get that brush there we go and we're just going to go in and kind of get some of the flames off the pieces of the pumpkin where we don't need them to be just by masking them out. It's okay that it's above the pumpkin, but it should not be below the pumpkin. There we go. So now we have our flames happening inside the pumpkin. And again, you can adjust that to your heart's content, making it look uh, more realistic for you, for your um, look, for your object that you're doing. Okay. So you get the idea there. We have a nice flame going on inside of our pumpkin. And again, we can always scale that up, do whatever we want, clone it, whatever we want, add another stroke, add more flames, add whatever you want to do to it. Okay, next thing we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and add our type. Let's finish this off with two more things. We're going to grab some text. So we'll use our type tool. And once we're in the type tool, we're just going to go ahead and click. And we're going to type the word happy. And we're just going to uh, select that and scale that way down, uh, holding down our shift key to keep it proportional. And we'll scale that happy down. We'll worry about the color in just a moment. Uh, actually, let's go ahead and deal with the color now. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, go ahead and switch up, switch over to my uh, iOS device here my iPhone and once my iPhone comes up the next thing we'll do is we'll go ahead and launch Adobe color because with Adobe color what I'm going to do is go ahead and add a new color from the camera and I've got this nice um, this uh, coaster here it's got some nice fall colors in it and these colors are cool and I kind of want to use them as a matter of fact I want some of the red from the grapes there we go I want some of the green from that background, I want the red from that wine. I'm just picking these up and moving them around to my taste. And let's see, I've got one, two, three, four. Where's my other one? I'm missing one. There we go, we'll kind of pull that one down. There's one in the white somewhere, I don't even see it. Oh, there's a ring, oh, there it is. Okay, we'll pull the white one down and maybe pull it and get some of that or maybe some of that color. All right, so now that I've got my pumpkin colors, or I'm sorry, my fall colors, we'll just go ahead and hit the check mark here to lock it in. And we'll go ahead and call this our fall colors. And because of the new functionality built into Creative Cloud, that is now syncing that theme. And as you saw it pop up over there on Photoshop, it's already here in my new libraries. So for example, if I kind of want that beige for my uh, type color, I just click on that beige and that's my type color. If I want the dark green, there's a dark green. If I want the burgundy, I get the burgundy. You get the idea, but those are the colors that I now can work with that I just picked up from my iPhone using the Adobe Color app. Okay, next um, we want to do one more type. Obviously, we want the word Halloween. So let's go ahead and grab our type tool one more time. And we want a different font for this one. And let's go ahead and select it. Let's scale it down just a little bit there. And uh, for this particular one, we'll grab our uh, move tool, we'll move it down. And for this particular one, I know the font that I want to use. I have it in mind already. Let's go ahead and grab our uh, type tool one more time. And I want to 
I can't I can just simply go through and scroll through my fonts which is kind of new in uh, the 2014 update in October but there's a typekit font that I want to use and that typekit font that I want to use is not here so let's go ahead and say add fonts from typekit you have these fonts available to you because you're a Creative Cloud member um, what I want to do now is go to if you're a full Creative Cloud member I should say I want to go to decorative and I want to scroll down and I know where it is. I just can't remember what it's called. It's all the way down here. And it is called Quake. There it is. So I'm going to go ahead and say use the Quake font. Sync select it. It is now syncing that font with my Creative Cloud. I can go ahead and close this at this point. And um, once it's synced, I can then head back over to Photoshop and use it. All right. Looks like Quake um, standard was just added. So now I can go in and choose it. And there it is in my menu. Didn't have to quit Photoshop, didn't have to do anything extra. And while we're at it, we can go in and just select a different color. This time we'll grab one from the flames themselves. We'll make it a little brighter. And there we go. We have our happy Halloween. And uh, let's go ahead and dress that up just a little bit, bit better. We're gonna go ahead and scale it up some more. Let's go ahead and pull that over and move it and pull it there we go and we're going to use a um a style or layer effect on that so we'll go to our effects panel and we're going to do an inner shadow and with a nice inner shadow we can go ahead and play with the distance there we go and that'll make it look even creepier click ok we've got our inner shadow going on last but not least so I've shown you two filters so far the flame filter and the tree filter last filter let's go to our background and actually let's make a new layer from here and with that new layer we're gonna go in and we're gonna call this one frame so now that we have a frame layer we can go to our filter menu come down to render go over to frame or not not flame not flame flame picture frame there we go <laughs> go to picture frame and with our new picture frame that's a little too cute it's a little too happy for our uh, scene here today so we're going to scroll all the way down and we're just going to grab the uh, standard art frame now there's some cool things here it will do an inset if you let it i don't want an inset i want it to go all the way out to the edge i also don't need it to be quite so big quite so thick so i'm going to tone it down a bit also, the green color won't really help me in this case, so I'm going to go ahead and grab a different color. And again, I could sample um, sample colors, but I'm just going to go ahead and mix one myself. Kind of get it toned down or up to the orange flavor there. We'll go ahead and close this and click OK. And that will generate our frame. And it's kind of cool because of where I put it in the layers. It's actually below some layers, above other layers. So if you wanted it to be, if you wanted it to, <laughs> it's because I'm using that um, eyedropper. If you wanted it to cover other things, just go ahead and move it up in the stacking order or down in the stacking order or in between in the stacking order. So the pumpkin's on top, but the tree is behind. So that's it for this episode of Adobe Creative Cloud TV. You've seen three new filters in Photoshop. The picture frame and the um, tree were there before. Scripted patterns, again, kind of buried. No one really knew where they were. But now you have them as filters. Very easy to use anytime you want. Just remember to create that new layer first. Then you have more flexibility for what you do with the rendered content that's on it. Thanks again for watching. My name is Terry White. We'll catch you on the next one.